um, we will be starting our liturgy for today, um, our Good Friday liturgy. So I ask that you all please kneel. Please stand. Remember your mercies, O Lord, and with your eternal protection, sanctify your servants, for whom Christ your Son, by the shedding of his blood, was established the Paschal Mystery, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. First reading. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. See, my servant shall prosper. He shall be raised high and greatly exalted, even as many were amazed at him. So marred was his look beyond human semblance, and his appearance beyond that of the sons of man. So shall he startle many nations. Because of him, kings shall stand speechless, for those who have not been told shall see, those who have not heard shall ponder it. Who has believed what we have heard? To whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He grew up like a sapling before him, like a shoot from the parched earth. There was in him no stately bearing to make us look at him nor appearance that would attract us to him. He was spurned and avoided by people, a man of suffering, accustomed to infirmity. One of those from whom people hide their faces, spurned, and we held him in no esteem. Yet it was our infirmities that he bore, our sufferings that he endured, while we thought of him as stricken, as one smitten by God and afflicted. But he was pierced for our offenses, crushed for our sins. Upon him was the chastisement that makes us whole. By his stripes we were healed. We had all gone astray like sheep, each following his own way. But the Lord laid upon him the guilt of us all. Though he was harshly treated, he submitted and opened not his mouth. Like a lamb led to the slaughter, or a sheep before the shearers, he was silent and opened not his mouth. Oppressed and condemned, he was taken away. And who would have thought any more of his destiny? When he was cut off from the land of the living, and smitten for the sin of his people. A grave was assigned him among the wicked and a burial place with evildoers, though he had done no wrong nor spoken any falsehood. But the Lord was pleased to crush him in infirmity. If he gives his life as an offering for sin, he shall see his descendants in a long life and the will of the Lord shall be accomplished through him. Because of his affliction, he shall see the light and fullness of days. Through his suffering, my servant shall justify many, 
and their guilt he shall bear. Therefore, I will give him his portion among the great, and he shall divide the spoils with the mighty, because he surrendered himself to death and was counted among the wicked, and he shall take away the sins of many and win pardon for their offenses. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews, brothers and sisters. Since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast to our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who has similarly been tested in every way yet without sin. So let us confidently approach the throne of grace to receive mercy and to find grace for timely help. In the days when Christ was in the flesh, he offered prayers and supplications 
with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverence. Son though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered. And when he was made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. The word of the Lord. Jesus Christ, according to John. Jesus went out with his disciples across the Kidron Valley to where there was a garden, into which he and his disciples entered. Judas, his betrayer, also knew the place because Jesus had often met there with his disciples. So Judas got a band of soldiers and guards from the chief priests and the Pharisees and went there with lanterns, torches, and weapons. Jesus, knowing everything that was going to happen to him, went out and said to them, Whom are you looking for? They answered him, Jesus the Nazarene. He said to them, I am. Judas, his betrayer, was also with them. When he said to them, I am, they turned away and fell to the ground. So again, he asked them, Whom are you looking for? They said, Jesus the Nazarene. Jesus answered, I told you that I am. So if you are looking for me, let these men go. This was to fulfill what he had said. I have not lost any of those you gave me. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it struck the high priest's slave and cut off his right ear. The slave's name was Malchus. Jesus said to Peter, Put your sword into a scabbard. Shall I not drink the cup that the father gave me? So the band of soldiers, the tribune, and the Jewish guards seized Jesus, bound him, and brought him to Annas first. He was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, who was the high priest that year. It was Caiaphas who had counseled the Jews that it was better that one man should die rather than the people. Simon Peter and another disciple followed Jesus. Now the other disciple was known to the high priest, and he entered the courtyard of the high priest with Jesus. But Peter stood at the gate outside. So the other disciple, the acquaintance of the high priest, 
went out and spoke to the gatekeeper and brought Peter in. Then the maid, who was the gatekeeper, said to Peter, You are not one of this man's disciples, are you? He said, I am not. Now the slaves and the guards were standing around a charcoal fire that they had made because it was cold and were warming themselves. Peter was also standing there keeping warm. The high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and about his doctrine. Jesus answered him, I have spoken publicly to the world. I have always taught in a synagogue or in the temple area where all the Jews gather. And in secret, I have said nothing. Why ask me? Ask those who have heard, what, heard me what I said to them. They know what I said. When he had said this, one of the temple guards standing there struck Jesus and said, Is this the way you answered the high priest? Jesus answered him, If I have spoken wrongly, testify to the wrong. But if I have spoken rightly, why do you strike me? Then Annas sent him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. Now Simon Peter was standing there keeping warm, and they said to him, You are, you not, are not one of his, his disciples, disciples, are you? He denied it and said, I am not. One of the slaves of the high priest, a relative of the one whose, Peter, whose ear Peter had cut off, said, Didn't, Didn't I, see I see you in the garden, garden with, with him? him? Again, Peter denied it, and immediately the cock crowed. Then they brought Jesus from Caiaphas to the Praetorium. It was morning, and they themselves did not enter the Praetorium in order not to be defiled so that they could eat the Passover. So Pilate came out to them and said, What charge do you bring against this man? They answered and said to him, If he were not a criminal, we would not have handed him over to you. At this, Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and judge him according to your law. The Jews answered him, We do, we do not, not have, have the right, right to, execute to execute anyone. In order that the word of Jesus might be fulfilled, that he said, indicating the kind of death he would die. So Pilate went back into the praetorium and summoned Jesus and said to him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered him, Do you say this on your own? or if others told you about me? Pilate answered, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom does not belong to this world. If my kingdom did belong to this world, my attendants would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not here. So Pilate said to him, then you are a king. Jesus answered, You say I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. Pilate said to him, What is truth? When he had said this, he again went out to the Jews and said to them, I find no guilt in him. But you have a custom that I release one prisoner to you at Passover. Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? They cried out again. Not this one, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a revolutionary. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him scourged. And the soldiers wove a crown out of thorns and placed it on his head. And clothed him in a purple cloak. And then they came to him and said, Hail, Hail King, King of the, the Jews. Jews. And they struck him repeatedly. Once more Pilate went out and said to them, Look, I am bringing him out to you, so that you may know that I find no guilt in him. So Jesus came out, wearing the crown of thorns and the purple cloak, and Pilate said to them, Behold the man. When the chief priests and the guards saw him, they cried out, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him. I find no guilt in him. The Jews answered, We have a law, and according to that law he ought to die. 
because he made himself the Son of God. Now when Pilate heard this statement, he became even more afraid and went back into the praetorium and said to Jesus, Where are you from? Jesus did not answer him. So Pilate said to him, Do you not speak to me? Do you not know that I have power to release you and I have power to crucify you? Jesus answered him, You would have no power over me if it had not been given to you from above. For this reason, the one who handed me over to you has the greater sin. Consequently, Pilate tried to release him, but the Jews cried out, If you release him, you are not a friend of Caesar. Everyone who makes himself a king opposes Caesar. When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus out and seated him on the judge's bench in the place called Stone Pavement, in Hebrew, Gabbatha. It was preparation day for Passover, and it was about noon. And he said to the Jews, Behold your king. They cried out, Take him away, take him away, crucify him. Pilate said to them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king but Caesar. Then he handed him over to be crucified. So they took Jesus, and carrying the cross himself, he went out to what is called the place of the skull, in Hebrew, Golgotha. There they crucified him with two others, one on either side, with Jesus in the middle. Pilate also had an inscription written and put on the cross. It read, Jesus the Nazarene, the King of the Jews. Now many of the Jews read this inscription because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city. It was written in Hebrew, Latin, and Greek. So the chief priest of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not not write the king of the Jews, but that he said, I am the king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four shares, a share for each soldier. They also took his tunic, but the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from the top down. So they said to one another, Let's not tear it, but cast lots for it to see whose it will be. In order that the passage of the scripture might be fulfilled that says, They divided my garments among them, and for my vesture they cast lots. This is what the soldiers did. Standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas and Mary of Magdala. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple there whom he loved, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his home. After this, the word that everything was now finished, in order that the scripture might be fulfilled, Jesus said, I thirst. There was a vessel filled with common wine. So they put a sponge soaked in wine on a sprig of hyssop and put it up to his mouth. When Jesus had taken the wine, he said, It is finished. And bowing his head, He handed over the spirit. Please kneel. Please stand. Since it was preparation day, in order that the bodies might not be remain on the cross on the Sabbath, for the Sabbath day of the week, of that week was a solemn one. The Jews asked Pilate that their legs be broken and that they be taken down. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and then of the other one who was crucified with Jesus. 
But when they had come to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. But one soldier thrust his lance into his side, and immediately blood and water flowed out. An eyewitness has testified, and his testimony is true. He knows that he is speaking the truth, so that you also may come to believe. For this happened so that the scripture passage might be fulfilled. Not a bone of it will be broken. And another passage says, They will look upon him whom they have pierced. After this, Joseph of Arimathea, secretly a disciple of Jesus for fear of the Jews, asked Pilate if he could remove the body of Jesus, and Pilate permitted it. So he came and took his body. Nicodemus, the one who had first come to him at night, and also came bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, weighing about 100 pounds. They took the body of Jesus and bound it with burial cloths along with the spices, according to the Jewish burial custom. Now in the place where they had been, he had been crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden a new tomb, which no one had yet been buried. So they laid Jesus there because of the Jewish preparation day, for the tomb was close by. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Today is Good Friday, and we know that this is the day that our Lord Jesus Christ went through what we just heard in the gospel, that he, this is the day that Christ died for our sins. And, of course, we heard uh, this gospel, uh, um, but in a different um, book. This was John, I think, last Sunday, on Palm Sunday, we just heard it, but it was from Luke. Same, same gospel story, just a different account of the passion of Jesus Christ, what he went through. And to keep this humbly brief, um, I just wanted to also kind of do something similar if you were at one of my masses on Palm Sunday. If not, that's okay. So I want us to reflect on this. Good Friday is the day Jesus died. But it's also a day where because of that, we reflect on the great love that Christ had for us, the love that we were unworthy to, to have, but that God still gave us because he loved us that much. And so I want to, us to kind of reflect on these, these few things that Jesus went through during his whole journey, um, from his getting arrested all the way to his death, those maybe 24 hours, if even that, that he went through. First, he was accused. He was accused of blaspheming and calling himself the son of God. And that was one of the most disrespectful things you can do. That's what people thought. But of course we know that Christ was the Son of God. He is the Son of God. So I want us to really kind of think of how bad it feels when you're accused of something you didn't do, when you didn't do anything wrong. Christ was mocked and ridiculed. Imagine just how bad that makes you feel. But Christ was hearing it constantly. Even on the cross, they put the king of the Jews as, a, as something to mock him. The crown of thorns. They said, oh, you're a king? Here's a crown. And they gave him a crown of thorns that was, that was making him bleed, causing him pain. He was beaten. Um, even before he took up the cross, uh, one of the guards said he struck Christ. He was spit on. He was tortured. Christ was then stripped of his garments. They just ripped his clothes off of him and then took it all. The guards took it all. And they, they played games for it. They played lots for him to see who would get to have them, get to keep Jesus' clothes. And this is also, he was humiliated. He was naked in front of everyone, made to carry this huge cross, and he fell multiple times. Christ was betrayed, not just by Judas, of course we know that, but even all the other disciples, including Peter, betrayed Jesus. When Jesus needed them most, they said they didn't know him. And, the only dis and all the disciples, not just Peter, not just Judas, but all the disciples besides John, betrayed him. They abandoned him in his time of need. 
And ultimately, we know that Christ was killed, that he died on the cross. And all of these things he did out of his great love for us. And the, the love of God is so powerful that when we see the cross, when we see a cross, we think of Christ. Even if you're not um, Christian, when you see a cross, you know, oh, that represents Christians, people that believe in Jesus. Even if you don't believe in Jesus yourself, it became that, that became the meaning of the cross. But the thing is, what the cross is, it's an execution tool. It's a way that the Romans used to torture you to death. It was like the electric chair, but their version of it. And it was made so that when you're on the cross, you can't breathe. You have to keep holding yourself up to breathe. And eventually, you're going to get too tired to do that. So you're going to suffocate to death. You're not going to be able to breathe. And it's just a gruesome, horrible, terrible thing. And that's what they chose to execute Jesus with, make him carry that cross himself, his own death tool, machine, whatever, and then to die on that cross. But the love of God is so great that that tool of evil, that tool of just horrendous, something that's horrendous, used for murder or used for killing, became the greatest symbol of love. Now when we see the cross, now when we see Christ, we don't even think of, oh, that used to be an execution tool. No. We think that is Jesus who's dying for us, dying for our sins, even though he did no wrong because of his great love for us. And so today on this Good Friday, um, in this liturgy, that's what we reflect on, that love that God had for us, that love that we don't deserve, but that God still gave us because he loved us so much. That's why we were called to repent for our sins, to be sorry for our sins during Lent. Because all of this, all of our sins, that's why Jesus had to die on the cross for us. But he did so out of, he chose to do it out of his great love for us. And so we just really reflect on that simple but super important point that Christ loved us so much that he chose to accept his death on the cross, that he chose to go through all of the suffering, all because of his love for us. Please stand. So next, um, what we have is are called the solemn intercessions. We have the regular intercessions um, when we have mass, when we sit, we pray for certain things. But for Good Friday, we are given a special set of intercessions and a special way to pray them um, by the church. And so there, there are a lot of them. There are eleven. But, and but um, how it will go is I will read the first part of the prayer. Then I will invite everyone to kneel just for a brief second and to stand back up. If you, if this might be um, physically burdensome on some of you, um, so if you cannot, uh, feel free to either stay standing or be seated um, for these prayers. Um, that's perfectly fine. And I'll, I will, um, I will uh, signify when to kneel and when to stand. And so first, let us pray, dearly beloved, for the Holy Church of God, that our, that our God and Lord be pleased to give her peace, to guard her, and to unite her throughout the whole world, and grant her leading our life in tranquility and quiet, we may glorify God the Father Almighty. Please kneel. Please stand. Almighty and ever-living God, who in Christ revealed your glory to all the nations, watch over the works of your mercy, that your church spread throughout all the world, may persevere with steadfast faith in confessing your name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also for our most holy father, Pope Francis that our God and Lord who chose him for the order of bishops may keep him safe and unharmed for the Lord's holy church to govern the holy people of God. Let us kneel.
Let us stand. Almighty, ever-living God, by whose decree all things are founded, look with favor on our prayers and in your kindness protect the Pope chosen for us, that under him the Christian people governed by you, their maker, may grow in merit by reason of their faith. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also for our Bishop, Archbishop Gomez, for all bishops, priests, and deacons of the church, and for the whole and of the faithful people. Let us kneel. Let us stand. Almighty, ever-living God, by whose spirit this whole body of the church is sanctified and governed, hear our humble prayers for your ministers, that by the gift of your grace all may serve you faithfully, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also for our catechumens, that our God and Lord may open wide the ears of their inmost hearts and unlock the gates of his mercy, that having received forgiveness for, of all their sins through the waters of rebirth, they too may be one with Christ Jesus, our Lord. Let us kneel. Let us stand. Almighty ever-living God, who make your church ever fruitful with new offspring, Increase the faith and understanding of our catechumens that are reborn in the font of baptism. They may be added to the number of your adopted children through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also for all our brothers and sisters who believe in Christ, that our God and Lord may be pleased as he lived the truth to gather them together and keep them in his one church. Let us kneel. Let us stand. Almighty, ever-living God, who gather what is scattered and keep together what you have gathered, look kindly on the flock of your Son, that those whom one baptism has consecrated may be joined together by integrity of faith and united by the bond, in the bond of charity, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also for the Jewish people, to whom the Lord our God spoke first, that he may grant them to advance in love of his name and in the faithfulness to his covenant. Let us kneel. Let us stand. Almighty, ever-living God, who bestowed your promises on Abraham and his descendants, graciously hear the prayers of your church the people you first made your own may attain the fullness of redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also for those who do not believe in Christ. Then enlightened by the Holy Spirit, they too may enter on the way of salvation. Let us kneel. Let us stand. Almighty, ever-living God, grant to those who do not confess Christ that by walking before you with a sincere heart, they may find the truth that, they, that we ourselves, being constant in mutual love and striving to understand more fully the mystery of, of your life, may be made more perfect witnesses to your love in the world through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also for those who do not acknowledge God that following what is right in sincerity of heart they may find the way to God himself. Let us kneel. Let us stand. Almighty, ever-living God, who created all people to seek you always by desiring you and finding you, come to rest. Grant, we pray, that despite every harmful obstacle, all may recognize the signs of your fatherly love and the witnesses of the good works done by those who believe in you, 
His own gladness confess you, the one true God and Father of our human race, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for those in public office, that our God and Lord may direct their minds and hearts according to his will, for the true peace and freedom of all. Let us kneel. Let us stand. Almighty, ever-living God, in whose hand lies every human heart and the rights of peoples, look with favor, we pray, on those who govern with authority over us, that throughout the whole world the prosperity of peoples, the assurances of peace, and the freedom of religion may through your gift be made secure through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray, dearly beloved, to God the Father Almighty, that he may cleanse the world of all errors, banish disease, drive out hunger, unlock prisons, loosen fetters, granting to travelers safety, to pilgrims return, health to the sick, and salvation to the dying. Let us kneel. Let us stand. Almighty, ever-living God, comfort our mourners, strength of all who toil. May the prayers of those who cry out in any tribulation come before you, that all may rejoice, because in their hour of need, your mercy was at hand. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And lastly, let us pray for the people in Ukraine and in all war zones of the world. For those who have fled the dread of violence and have been deprived of their homes. For all women and men who stand up with their lives to ward off evil and to protect the weak and, be, and the persecuted. Please let us kneel. Let us stand. Almighty and eternal God, you have compassion for the lowly and the poor, but you throw down oppressors. As you guided Israel out of slavery in Egypt, so save in our days all victims of war and violence, change the hearts of the evildoers, and let peace be victorious. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Please stand and turn your attention to the back of the church. Um, I will be making three tops, once in the back right here, once in the middle, and once um, at the front of the altar. Um, I will be singing um, the Behold the Wood of the Cross chant, and our response will be, Come, let us adore him. It will be sung, and um, that will just be led by our choir. So if you can follow along in that simple line just three times. 
one's in the back, one's in the middle, and one's in the front. Behold the wood of the cross on which hangs the wood of salvation. Come, Come let us adore. Behold the wood of the cross on which hangs the wood of salvation. Come, let us adore. Behold the wood of the cross on which hangs the word of salvation. Come, let us adore. We will now be entering the time um, for the veneration of the cross, um, how we'll be doing this is um, we will have, for the two sides, we'll have one row coming at a time towards the middle, and for the two middle aisles, we'll come down from the middle. Uh, we'll start from the front. Um, the ushers will help guide you all. Uh, when you do come up, we ask that um, you do not um, touch the cross or kiss the cross, but instead do a simple bow. Uh, we ask that you um, do, it, do so in a timely manner just to keep the flow of things going and um, if you would like more time to venerate the cross after Mass, the cross will still remain here um, to give an opportunity to do so. Thank you.
We now will um, enter the time for Holy Communion. Um, at this time, oh, oh, you may be seated. Um, we, we do have a collection that's a tradition for us as Catholics, not just here at St. Peter, but all throughout the world. Um, every Good Friday, we have a special collection in every, every parish around the world uh, for the Holy Land. So uh, today, uh, this will be the appropriate time. The baskets are the, at the back of the aisles, just like Sunday Mass. Um, so now will be the appropriate time to do so. All the, all of the donations here will go to the Holy Land to help those of our brothers and sisters um, over there, um, help them with the things that they need for their faith and their, uh, or their for their churches and their practices um, as our brothers and sisters in Christ. Thank you.
Please stand. And at the Savior's command, informed by the divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom for the and kingdom power. power and the glory are yours now and forever. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. My Ruth, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Almighty, ever-living God, who have restored us to life by the blessed death and resurrection of your Christ, preserve us in the work of your mercy, that by partaking of this mystery we may have a life unceasingly devoted to you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Um, just a quick announcement. Like I said earlier, um, if you would like to stay after um, this, the liturgy, after the service today, um, to venerate the cross um, on, in your own way, um, please feel free to do so. Um, at 1.45, we do have the seven last words, so I encourage you to take um, part in that as well. It will be at 1.45, so in just about 35 minutes. Um, other than that, um, after the final blessing, once I process out, um, that will be um, the end of the service, um, and I wish you all a blessed um, rest of your holy week. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. May abundant blessing, O Lord, we pray, descend upon your people who have honored the death of your Son in the hope of their resurrection. May pardon come, comfort be given, holy faith increase, and everlasting redemption be made secure through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>